Today, Rochelle Robinette joins us on the show. She is a registered herbalist and founder of Pharmacon Supernatural. This episode is to help you to remember. So I know that working with plants and herbs can seem overwhelming sometimes, but I am sure from this conversation, we are going to just hand you a little thread where you can start to follow it and all will be revealed in good time. We are nature, we are the earth, we are the water, we are the air, we are the fire. And it can seem like such a distant knowing because of all of the fast-paced energy around us and technology that can take us away from nature. But in the moments when we slow down and we feel and we return to the body, we begin to remember all that wisdom that is within us. And we've been sold so many stories that we need certain products and chemicals to survive in this world. But if you just look around you, nature offers you everything that you need in this moment. It's just getting to know it again. And I say that whilst at the same time I'm so thankful for the technology that we do have to support humans. My friend right now is in hospital and like we don't know what we would do without all the wonderful nurses and doctors and healthcare assistants and the medicine that she's been offered to help her get back to a harmonious way of being. So I just wanted to add that in there because I do appreciate that. But at the same time, there's so much that we have forgotten. And it just starts with a spark of remembrance. The moments where you start to get excited and inspired. And it can start just from observing what is in your garden and finding out what is that medicine that is around me. And also tuning into our own rhythms and the moon and finding out what herbs will be good for us at different stages of the month and different stages of our life as well. So when was the last time that you just went into nature, you took a flower, you looked at its beauty, you smell it, maybe you taste it if you knew that it was an edible? When was the last time you did that? And if you can remember, how did it make you feel? So we look in the gardens and we see dandelions and the supermarket will sell us a chemical to put on to these beautiful plants, this beautiful medicine that is offered to us so freely because they don't fit into this green, green grass image. And this is happening all the time. So right now I am in Peru. There's so much plant medicine around. It's absolutely amazing. And we have a little garden. I've started to grow some things, um, some salad, some vegetables, some fruits, some herbs. And it's just amazing, especially with Araya, just getting her little paws into the dirt and learning when to water the plants and singing to them. And it is such a gift being here and being able to experience that. And we can all have that. Everybody has a windowsill. <laughs> like we can put things on our windowsill. We can, we can start to mother the plants and integrate them into our, our day as well. So I just feel as I'm here right now and being with the plants and making it such a part of my day and learning so much more, it is the most authentic spiritual practice that I've ever engaged in. Every day I come out and I have something to care for. I am with nature. I, I am witnessing life and death every single day around me. And just showing how when I show up, the plants start to thrive. When I get distracted and move away and ignore them, there is neglect and they, they start to die. And then it just gets me thinking, okay, where is my waste um, organics going? Am I putting them in the earth? What am I buying? What are they sprayed with? And it's just a whole opening that I love. I love this journey. But in this conversation, we talk about so many things. And Rochelle really 
helps to hold that space for curiosity when working with plants and working with herbs because she reminds us that we don't have to know it all at once. And she shares some tips and some blends that would be perfect for mothers to to nourish and replenish. Rochelle is super passionate about this and you can find so much information that she is offering online. Little one minute videos that she's putting on Instagram that is so easy to digest and just to get you started. So when I was recording this, I was jet lagged. I was coming back to the UK for my brother's funeral. So I was in the UK at the time, but I was so happy to be able to sit with Rochelle and learn so much from her. So I hope that you love this conversation. Let's just take a moment to breathe, to lengthen through the spine, to feel that space down the back of the neck, reaching all the way down to the tailbone. And maybe you want to just take some movements with your shoulders and your neck and really come to land in your body. Thank you so much for being here. here we Welcome, everybody, to the Depths of Motherhood podcast. I'm your host, Danielle. This week, Rochelle joins us on the show. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Mm, thank you for taking this seat with us today. I'd love for you to start by sharing a little bit about yourself in your own words. I am Rochelle Robinette, the founder of Pharmacon Supernatural and Herbals. And I'm a registered herbalist. I'm based in Brooklyn. But at this point, so much of the work that I do is digital, uh, that it feels like I'm, you know, I'm based a little bit of a little I'm based everywhere. We say a, a New York based globally spirited company. And my work is really focused on helping people to be healthier with plants and leading that with education. So really trying to guide you know, informed, empowered, inspired, you know, use of plants for well-being. Perfectly said. <laughs> and that's exactly why I've been following you on Instagram, because you read it so simply, and you just get like them nuggets of information across that can really just change lives, because sometimes it can be overwhelming, I think. And especially for so the people that are listening to this, the mothers that are listening to this, they're looking for this new way. And for many of us, we haven't been brought up within the community where there's a medicine woman or somebody who knows how to speak the language of the plants. So we're like grasping, you know, and sharing information. So I love that we can just like connect with you and get these little bite-sized pieces that aren't too overwhelming as well. So I'm curious to how you actually got to this point, because I think that is one of the big things when it comes to, to plants and understanding them is there's so much information and it's like, we can almost, we almost get to know a plan and then suddenly we need another one and that one's forgotten. <laughs> so um, so yeah. how did you, how did you get here? Yeah. I mean, it's really, you know, not to, not to make it sound daunting. Um, it's been a, it's been a lifelong journey for me. But I think that rather than that maybe sounding daunting, it, I hope it's I hope it's more encouraging because, you know, the vast majority of what I learned and what I, you know, teach from, I I gleaned by, you know, self self-study and and just this focused, um, diligent, not not, you know, that I was spending a ton of hours, but every day I was you know, wanting to understand the implications of the foods that I was eating, the relationship that we have to the natural world, like sunlight, air, water, you know, how our habits affect us and just that constant kind of attention and relationship to, you know, the fact that we are nature and we exist, you know, in a constant relationship with the natural world, whether or not we're consciously aware of it, it exists. And if we start to pay attention just little by little by little, we will learn these, these things. And one of the beautiful things about this path is that, you know, we are constantly 
re-encountering and reinforcing these, you know, this relationship and these little tidbits of information that we learn because we're eating all day long. We're interacting with light all day long. We're drinking water all day long. So one time we learn the benefits of, I don't know, spinach, right? We're going to encounter spinach a lot more times in our life, hopefully, and recall and recall and reinforce and reinforce. So I think the fact that we're constantly engaged with these things and then can choose to be more so, you know, if we want to spend more time kind of with plants or on this on this path or in a plant-based lifestyle, um, that foundation can build really quickly. And for me, it was the first, you know, couple of decades of my life, that kind of attention, because I was not trying to make this my career. You know, I was just really interested in, you know, as a kid, mom, why are peas good for us? Why are carrots good for us? What is vitamin C? And then, you know, and it grows from there and grows from there. And you can, you know, choose to sort of specialize in it and study it or not. But all to sum all of that up, you know, I would say just one step at a time, you know, understanding our relationship and kind of the the effects. I don't even want to say the benefits. It's usually the benefits, but it's like, what are the effects of the things that I'm interacting with from the natural world on a daily basis, food, water, light, you know, herbs, tea. When you're speaking about this, it's, it gets me excited to start with because I <laughs> love all of it. And I think I'm one of them people that's like, I want to get in and learn it all. And then I get I get so overwhelmed and then I just stick yeah. with what I have. I'm in the UK and coming back to my hometown, it is nothing like when I was when I was living in Costa Rica, say last year, where I feel like I was in a community where everyone was slowing down to to uh, have a conversation with the natural world and ask for support and to be really sensitive to what what is happening and here it's like overconsumption of everything which is so far away from its natural form and i can feel i i almost feel imprisoned being here mm. because of it's like it's hard to to breathe and looking around it's hard to communicate with nature. So I'm wondering if you have like any tips on people that feel like maybe they are a little bit far away from nature and surrounded by this modern day society, what would be a really good place to start and maybe a simple, simple plants to bring in to their routine? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you're right that, that Costa Rica is especially good at that relationship. And I think that's part of why it's a blue zone, right? Like the Nicoya Peninsula is one of the blue zones in the world. They really have, you know, the pace and also that constant contact with an awareness of the the natural world, the food, you know, all of that. Um, but I mean, like you, you know, I live in a city, I live in Brooklyn. I've been in New York for, I don't know, 13 years now. And um, I think it's very possible and very helpful to have, you know, plants around us and all of the various forms that they can exist in environments like this. So, you know, the the first thing that I would say is is the most important is really to try to incorporate them in food form, you know, and that's a that's a good way to sort of check two boxes at once. We need to eat and if we can make some of that food you know, purposefully plant-based or purposely medicinal, that's herbalism, you know, and that, that's, that's, that's the primary form of health care for most of the world. And, and that is a huge part of herbalism and, and any herbalist would, would tell you the same, you know, it's, it starts with food. So maybe it's working with more garlic or ginger or turmeric or more spices. Um, tea is probably the next easiest way to bring some more plants into a daily routine. And it's such a nice way to work with plants because we get to see them, you know, especially if you're working with loose leaf tea, you get to see the color, the texture, you can smell them. It, there's a little ritual in making tea. It's a very, very effective and powerful way to work with plants. And it can start with just one at a time. You know, it could be just I'm drinking nettle tea for the next month and I'm going to see what happens. Or I'm making a little blend and I'm going to drink that for the next month and see what happens. 
uh, one at a time, you know, again. So I think those two are really, and that could be as far as you ever go, you know, and that, that is also like, that's, that's herbalism. So um, I think one other thing I wanted to mention when you were saying that, you know, you start to learn and then kind of realize how much there is to learn and that that can be overwhelming, which is something I hear a lot, you know, n no, no herbalist, no plant person on the planet knows all the plants. I mean, we're still discovering them, right? So we all, it's all a spectrum, you know, and if you've got five that you rely on and you love for your life, that's great. You know, it doesn't have to be 350. <laughs> <laughs> we can all take a breath now and have a little yeah. bit of the Sorry, yeah, there's no me. ends, you know, there's, there's no end. And, and that hopefully can be, yeah, more of a relief than, yeah. than um, an overwhelm. It reminds me of doing any yoga practice or breathing practice where it can get so extreme and there's so many different techniques, but ultimately it's to bring you back to yourself, to bring you back to your center. So if you are just talking or communicating or uh, having nettles as an ally, then you'll learn so much of how to to understand how that reacts within you, how that affects you. And mm -hmm. and I suppose then that's an, an opening to communicate with with nature in general, just as you start to yeah. tap into that on a subtle level. And I I love how you sit speaking about the um, the teas because I find it such a just a healing practice to gather some loose teas or some flowers and to put them together and just today actually I had my sister-in-law over and she's going through some stuff and I, I I was doing an energy healing session for her but I said let's have some tea beforehand and I almost made a coffee I'm like I really want a coffee right now and I thought <laughs> you know what I'll just make some tea and then we just smell you know the the chamomile as it was brewing and watched it open and it's just it was just such a nice moment to have and I know how special that is to me as a mother a new mother well she's two years now but just a moment where I can watch the tea and see the steam and smell it that's like my new meditation now yeah <laughs> yeah that's beautiful it is it is it is a form of meditation and even you know when you're choosing the the tea to drink that's a sort of intuitive process or a conversation that you're having with yourself how how do I feel what do I want? What do I need? Like all of those little things, they're sneaky, you know, but they're in there. And so when we're quote unquote, just making tea, like there's a lot more that's happening. Yeah. Totally. And I feel like it's, I mean, it's run since the beginning of time, since whenever they started making teas, but even in my town, they don't really have loose teas and stuff. So when I pull this out to my mom, she's like, where's the tea bag, you know, with the <laughs> dried tea from wherever it is, PG tips. And um, she finds it so funny that I'm doing it, but still that the ritual behind making a tea in where I live in this village, like put the kettle on, let's have a cup of tea. And then you sit down and you communicate with whoever's in front of you. And it is just this like slowing down for a moment. And I, I always, I feel that's what happens to me when I start to explore um, plants and herbs and that feeling to want to know everything is such from like the intellect it's from our culture isn't it? it's modern day culture of wanting to know every single thing so I wanted to just ask you before we go into anything else because your skin looks amazing by the way <laughs> I wanted you. to ask you what do you put on your face like do you have a special blend for a face mask or something <laughs> It's, I mean, I appreciate that. And it's such a, it's a question that I get a lot, which I also appreciate. Um, and it's also a question that I've gotten for so long that I have to, you know, I have to say that it is this, it's this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like I really, truly, truly practice the things that I preach and I have been for a really long time. And funny enough, and I'll, t and I'll tell you, you know, I can tell you like products, but I really don't have an intense, you know, skincare routine. I don't get facials. I, I don't, I, I did my first mask this week that I've done in, I don't, I can't remember the last time. Like I just don't, I just wash my face, you know, and I care about my skincare, but it's not, um, something that I, you know, I spend a, a lot more time like making tea. <laughs> um, but even, you know, the last conversation that I had at the transition of my career 
from working in fashion advertising to deciding to launch Supernatural was with a client at Estee Lauder who kind of flipped the conversation and said, I want to know what you're doing for your skincare routine. And I got super embarrassed. And I was like, well, it's like, it's because I don't drink alcohol and I drink these smoothies and I do these, you know, weird like plant-based things. And long story short, you know, she was the last person to nudge me to share all of that knowledge, you know, publicly because I had just been keeping it to myself until then. Um, so the skincare thing is like, it's, it's, it's a part of the whole story <laughs> for my skin is, um, and otherwise, I mean, my routine, you know, really simply, I wash my face at night. I don't wash it in the morning, ge generally because I exercise in the morning. So I'm just sweating off whatever I used to had on. Um, I wash it at night, you know, with cleansers that are always rotating. I always use a serum. They're all rotating. Um, I use some kind of fairly heavy moisturizer. Those are always rotating. Like I don't have like a, I'm not married to a <laughs> specific product or line. Um, and I use eye cream and SPF, you know, during the day, but it's, I think it really comes from, you know, no alcohol, minimal caffeine, tons of water, exercise every day, lots of sleep, love to sleep. And then I eat, you know, I eat the way that I preach, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time. So, so everyone getting... who's waiting for this, like magic thing, you're like, <laughs> sorry to tell you. <laughs> I know. Sorry, not sorry, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but truly, you know, and, and I'll travel and go somewhere and like only take Egyptian magic, you know, this like cre this cre cream that's like olive oil and beeswax or be uh, propolis or something else, you know, just one product. And like my skin looks exactly the same, you know, before and after. So I, I, I don't really notice a difference with good skincare products, but I'll notice a difference if like, you know, I'm jet lagged or dehydrated or something like that. Um, mm. Yeah. So. Do you think a lot of us are dehydrated then? <laughs> like, um, do you think it's a thing in our society to be dehydrated, or do you think it's there's too much emphasis on it? Or I have uh, just to add to that. Do you think we need to put herbs and other plant-based things into our water? Would that help us absorb it more? Well. Yeah, I think, I mean, that can help if, if we are nutrient deficient or dehydrated or, you know, tea is a very good way and tinctures too, but tea primarily is a great way to get uh, vitamins and minerals in your water. Uh, I do use, I use electrolytes and I'll recommend those to clients who exercise and sweat a lot. Mm. Uh, if somebody's not sweating a lot, then that doesn't tend to be necessary and how common it is, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever looked for sort of research on the statistics of how dehydrated we are generally. Like, you know, most, most people are deficient in magnesium, for example, but I don't know about hydration. I would say habitually, uh, probably 75% of the people that I encounter, like in my practice, aren't drinking enough water. And we, you know, exacerbate that fact by drinking things like coffee or alcohol, which are further going to, you know, dehydrate us. So mm. I, 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 you know, my, my personal, um, well, my recommendation is half your body weight in ounces of water per day minimum. Uh, and you want it to be good water. So that, that That's tends to be a nice then. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Or guess and then like over overdo it a little with the water, you know. Um, it's one of them things I hear a lot through the mothers. It's like just not remembering to drink enough yeah. and, you know, breastfeeding as well. One of them things. So I can feel it now, actually. I'm like, I'm thirsty. Where's my water? Yeah. <laughs> Is there any, um, what would be your favorite tea blend for, mm. for, for mothers? Let's say for um, new mothers. Yeah. Oh gosh, I wish I had this one memorized. We had a um, postnatal tea in our shop for a long time. I think it's sold out now. But so, so one thing to be mindful of is that during pregnancy and while breastfeeding, the the herbs in 
the format of the herbs, you want to be mindful of that. So for example, tea is a good idea, but tinctures generally are not recommended. More like concentrated forms of the mm-hmm. herbs are generally avoided until you're finished with nursing, um, just so that none of that is, you know, overstimulating or, you know, being passed along to to the babes. Um, but so depending on on um the time frame there. You know, high mineral teas tend to be really helpful. Um, I think, you know, the the blend that I'm referencing that that I created for this purpose, I think it was nettle, red clover, raspberry leaf. Um, fenugreek is used a lot during nursing. That one isn't generally very tasty though so you might want to use it as some sort of supplement but not like sip on it throughout the day um you know alfalfa is is a great high mineral herb uh oat straw can be really nice there i think that was actually the blend so you had nettle which is high mineral chlorophyll red clover is a great phytoestrogen so it can be helpful for hormone balance also very nutritive uh, raspberry leaf is very nutritive. It's also toning and has an affinity for the uterus. And then, like I mentioned, the alfalfa. And that sort of depends on on someone's constitution, you know. So if they wanted support with the lymph system, you know, maybe there are fresh cleavers in that blend. Uh, again, fenugreek for for um, nursing. That's called a galactagogue. Yeah, that's that's like a nice base. I would stick with that, like nettle, red, red clover, raspberry leaf, alfalfa. That's a great list. I'm going to write <laughs> this in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of them that are very familiar to me that I always go to, red raspberry leaf and nettles. And I'm just getting into red clover right now. I've been using that alone and I really feel, I don't know what it is about that, but I, I don't know. I feel really... Um, Something inside of me needs it. Could you mm. explain a little bit more about that just for my own curiosity? Sure. Well, you know, there there are different reasons why we'll feel drawn to certain plants. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's it's it happens before you have the plant, right? So you're just drawn to it from um folklore or from encountering it in the world or some sort of personal story. There's, you know, all these reasons that there that these plants exist kind of in the ether and in our consciousness and we can be drawn to them for those reasons. And then I think when people have the experience of consuming the plant and then like loving it and wanting more, you know, that can also be because it's giving you the nutrients that you need, making you feel really good. You know, red clover is a is a phytoestrogen and that category of plants are really, really beneficial for hormone balance. And the hormone balance is a huge, you know, um, I mean, it's a huge, hormones are a huge system. It's a, it's a, you know, an enormous topic. It's a struggle for a lot of people. And when our hormones are balanced, so many other things work better in our body, you know, our brains, our digestion, our skin, our sleep. And, you know, so it, it could be kind of cascading out for you in all of these different ways that make you feel, um, you know, better. Also, red clover is a beautiful plant. Like it's a beautiful tea, you know, really pretty. So I think especially when you when you get red clover that's vibrant in color, and that's a good way to kind of gauge the quality of your dried herbs, especially when they're flowers, how bright are they? Um, it's one of the prettiest teas, period. Oh, you're getting into something I was going to ask you. Like, how is the best way to choose these herbs? Because there's, there's so many around, but how do we know? Does it matter where we get them from? I'll ask that question. Yeah. Yes, it does. It really does. And I I think the easiest way to consider or the easiest criteria to apply to where you're sourcing your herbs from is the same criteria that you would apply to where you're getting your food from. So people have different uh, requirements, right? For somebody, it might absolutely positively need to be organic. For somebody else, they might prefer that it's local and in season. For somebody else, it might be, I just want red clover and the best I can do is to find the cheapest, most available red clover right now and then work my way up, you know, up from there. 
that's okay too. Like we're all where we are in terms of, you know, access and um, ethical requirements for where we're sourcing things. Ideally, herbs are coming from, you know, an organic or a sort of conscious farm environment. So, so places that are paying attention to the soil quality, any sort of pesticide use, you know, all these, because we're consuming them just like we would be consuming, you know, any kind of food. So, you know, again, you could, you can kind of look at those, those stamps of approval, or you can also go the sort of smaller farm direct, you know, route that you, that's available often in farmer's markets or smaller health food stores where like, oh, we know this came from the place down the street. And like, they don't have certified organic, you know, um, well, certification, because that's a very expensive process, but like, they're great. We love their farm. Like, you know, we want their red clover and red clover yeah. happens to be a cover crop often. So a lot of times you'll get it from places that are um, growing it in between food crops, which can be fun. If you get a plan that is potentially covered in pesticides and chemicals, what kind of effect does that have on us? It feels like so. It feels like you're gonna have to get some more herbs to get rid of that. Just it ever end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, if the plants are coming from you know from a place that's growing them that way, then they'll be you know contaminated in that way, and we'll get both you know the benefit mm -hmm. of the plant, but we'll also get everything that was applied to it or that it was grown in. Um, and it, yeah, and again, it's, and, and you're right, then we would need some extra like liver support or whatever it is. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's really worth buying them from good sources. And I don't know, I was going to try to guess the ratio of good sources to not, I feel like we're getting somewhere, <laughs> like in the world. Yeah, I, I do. I think, you know, because herbs are more of a choice and a smaller industry than food, right? Yeah. Like we need food for survival. And so food is grown in, in sort of all kinds of conditions. Um, mm. The world doesn't need metal to survive. And so I think when you're, you know, sourcing metal more often than not, it's coming from better than not environments, but that's, you know, that's a lot of like qualifications. So I think it's good to just confirm, you know, to confirm mm. and be sure. Yeah. When I was in Costa Rica, I couldn't find nettles anywhere. And then it made mm. me so sad that when I was in, like when I lived in France, there was so much like everywhere, you couldn't get rid of them. <laughs> Such an abundance. I also love that about um, being in your area and seeing what is around. You know, like seeing what plants that you can just use by going outside. And obviously you have to know where you are as well. Like if you're in the city, then probably it's going to be more polluted than if you're in the middle of nowhere, of course. Um, I wanted to ask you, because I know our time's coming to an end soon, but what is alive in you right now? Because I can see that you are always constantly like sharing this information and you must love learning about it too from what I can hear so is there something that you are feeling really passionate about right now or that you're learning something new about <laughs> yes yeah so two things come to mind one is that I'm working on my first book and Ooh, nice. that is yeah Congratulations. so that's uh it's a dream come true it's a huge undertaking and I am both you know thrilled to be doing it and not not daunted but very sort of just just kind of acknowledging the challenge of what you know what this process is you know trying to articulate everything that I have learned and want to share into this medium that I love you know I I have always wanted to, you know, quote unquote, be a writer. So really, really enthusiastic about this project. And it's, it's a long, it's a long game for sure. <laughs> so That's there's amazing. that. Yeah. That's really cool. Congratulations with that. Thank you. Thank I think you. it's massive, especially nowadays where there's so much online, but to have something 
to have, be able to have it, to touch it, to put it on your shelf. It's so special. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels like, it feels like in that form, you know, it can contain more than like, it will be, it will be so much of what I've shared and so much that I haven't shared yet, you know, as, mm. as sort of surprising as that may seem given how much I share. <laughs> um, but it just, yeah, it contains more. And I think, you know, there's some kind of complete thought that unites a book and that feels very central and kind of that's uh oh hi <laughs> yeah she hasn't come in yet usually she's in a bit earlier but she's come for some blue bear <laughs> I love it um yeah that central thought you're you know it's like what what is what is the theme what is the final say what is the kind of um the title of this chapter of my life and and of everything yeah. that I have to share you know and it'll be different in the future when the next book comes out and is a different idea so yes yeah okay. that's where I'm at it's so beautiful thank you for yes. sharing that yes and you said you had a second one what's your second thing that's alive in you yeah the second thing is the the, the my current study and my current study is um you know, I've always been studying my own mind, but I really doubled down on meditation and Dharma and I'm working with a teacher right now. And I'm just kind of going straight into, you know, the study of mind and what does it look like to really commit to it and what can I learn? And you know, I think in the past there have been phases where I've studied different things more intensely than others could be herbs, nutrition, you know, plant medicine, uh, all sorts of stuff. And, and right now it is, it is Dharma and mindfulness. So that's, that's, that's what I'm learning oh. right now. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, that's well, when your next book comes out, it will be completely different than if you're going into that right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're going to be you're one right. with the plants completely. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's funny you're saying it because like I have done so much um, yoga, meditation through my time, but it's it's now that I'm really understanding what it means to live each moment like that, to be in the present. And because I think I got so when you learn something new, it's like you get consumed with the information, and then there is the integration of it into your daily practice. And what does that mean? And I think there's an idea of what that looks like. And then there's the reality of what that looks like to you as 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 an individual with all your um, unique layers. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what unfolds with you. Seeing as though I can see on your social media, <laughs> yeah, you'll so be you meditating so well. the plants, and they'll all be floating around you. Or <laughs> I like that. I like that idea. <laughs> Image of the new mm. book. Yeah. So what will you be going to drink after this? What will be your tea of choice? Oh, I love that. Well, first it'll be water. Uh, because <laughs> I'm with you on our, that. <laughs> all of our conversation about that is in water. And then for the afternoon, let's see, what will I do? I think I might make some kind of mint tea. You know, I have a blend of cacao shells and peppermint, which is fun. It's like a chocolate mint tea. So Ooh, just the shells from the cacao. Mm hmm Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I brought them back for you. Guatemala, but I don't even recall where I was there that I got them. If it was like a market, a Lake Atila. Like I I was yes, yeah, um, San Marcos. I d don't think I made it to San Marcos. No, oh, you would have loved it there. That's like spiritual haven. It's amazing. Yeah, I've heard. I was on a I was on a um, permaculture farm called Mystical Yoga Farms. Oh, you and Sunana then. You know it better than I do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't know you were. Don't worry. <laughs> um, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely had to bring cacao back from that. It's like ultimate place, right? Yeah. So I, I think, I mean, that was off the cuff, but I think that's what I'll make. It sounds like an after lunch, like treat tea, a little uplifting. I really like peppermint, right? So, mm. so you know what? I'm going to join you, but I'm just going to have pure cacao. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. That we're just going to go for it. <laughs> Before bed, I won't even sleep. But because I'm jet lagged, I don't sleep till like two or three a.m. right now. So 
there's a few things that I need to start to uh, yeah pull back in. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for this conversation. And I would love for you to just share for a moment where people can find you. I'm going to write in the show notes, but with your own words, where they can find you and what to look forward to with you. Of course. Yes. So you can find everything at our website, which is the letter U, the letter R, supernatural.com. So you are supernatural.com. And I would recommend hopping on my email newsletter list there. That's a great way to just get updates and information and lots of resources that don't even make it to Instagram. And then the rest is on Instagram. So I'm at Rochelle Robinette on Instagram. And something to look forward to is a show. The show is coming soon. So a show? Me... What kind of show? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it'll be a show about all of this stuff. So just kind of expanding, you know, Instagram and, and some of the social channels can be so short form, you yeah. know, so we're expanding yeah. into video. Um, I'm already doing audio, but it'll be, uh, you know, hosted on YouTube and it'll be a longer form show, just continuing to teach about plants. So that's I coming love soon. It. Yeah. That's amazing. And just congratulations. Yeah. Cause I was trying to say congratulations, but I didn't come out. I was so excited. It's like, I thought I, maybe I can say it three times, but I thought I said the one and it wouldn't come out again. So there you go. I was receiving it. I got it. <laughs> thank you so send much. In, send in, All right. Well, thank you so much. And this is a beautiful conversation. And thank you for everything that you are bringing to the world, which is a lot. <laughs> thank you for having me. 